In this video, we're going to explore the photoelectric effect and solve two problems step by step. We'll start with a quick explanation of the phenomenon and the key equations, then dive into calculating threshold frequency, kinetic energy, and work function. Before we jump into the calculations, let's make sure we understand what's happening in the photoelectric effect. When light shines on the surface of certain metals, it can cause electrons to be ejected. These electrons are called photoelectrons. However, not all light can do this. The photons must have a frequency high enough to provide the energy needed to free the electrons. If the photon energy is exactly equal to the energy binding the electrons in the metal, the electrons will be released, but with no kinetic energy. If the light's frequency is above this minimum, the extra energy appears as the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons. If the frequency is below the threshold frequency, the photon's energy is insufficient to overcome the binding energy. No matter how intense the light is, no electrons will be emitted. This minimum frequency is called the threshold frequency, and the corresponding minimum energy is called the work function. The photoelectric equation summarizes this. Now that we know the theory and the equations, let's see how this works in practice with our first problem about cesium. The problem states, the work function of cesium is 3.42 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Our question is, what is the minimum frequency of light required to release electrons from cesium? So here's what we know. We're given the work function, w, and what we need to find is the threshold frequency, nu, naught. Now, the threshold frequency is the lowest frequency of light that has just enough energy to free an electron. At this point, the electron is released but with no extra kinetic energy. That brings us to the photoelectric equation. In general, it's h nu equals w plus kinetic energy. But since the electron leaves with no kinetic energy at the threshold, the equation simplifies to W equals H nu naught. Next, let's solve for the threshold frequency. Rearranging the equation gives nu naught equals W over H. Now we can substitute the numbers. That's 3.42 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules divided by 6.626 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds. Carrying out the calculation gives us 5.16 times 10 to the power of 14 per second. So the light must have a minimum frequency of about 5.16 times 10 to the power of 14 hertz in order to release electrons from cesium. Now that we've found the threshold frequency, let's move to the second part of the problem. This time, we want to know what happens if the light shining on cesium has a higher frequency than the threshold. Specifically, what is the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected electrons if the light has a frequency of 1 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz? To solve this, we go back to the full photoelectric equation h nu equals w plus kinetic energy. This time, the frequency nu is higher than the threshold, so the electrons will not only be released, but they'll also carry away some kinetic energy. Rearranging the equation for kinetic energy gives kinetic energy equals h nu minus w. Now we substitute the values. Planck's constant h is 6.626 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds. Multiply that by the light frequency, 1 times 10 to the power of 15 per second. Then subtract the work function, 3.42 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Doing the math, we get... 3.20 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. So the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected electrons is about 3.20 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Now that we've solved the case for cesium, let's move on to our second problem, 
this time with gold. The question says, light with a frequency of 2.11 times 10 to the power of 15 per second shines on gold, and the emitted electrons have a kinetic energy of 5.83 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. We need to determine the work function, W, of gold. So, here's the situation. We already know the frequency of the light, and we also know the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons. What we don't know, and what we need to find, is the work function, W. We'll start from the photoelectric equation, then isolate the unknown, and finally substitute the values. The photoelectric equation is H nu equals W plus Ke, because we're solving for the work function, we rearrange it to W equals H nu minus Ke. Now let's plug in what we know. Planck's constant, H, is 6.626 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds. The frequency nu is 2.11 times 10 to the power of 15 per second and the kinetic energy is 5.83 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. That gives a work function of 8.15 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. And that's our answer for the second problem. Before we finish, I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or if there's a problem you'd like me to solve in a future video, leave it in the comments below. I'll be happy to take a look and maybe feature your question next time.